All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Uh, today our topic is about calendar. Uh, you know, uh, all of us we knew, and nobody can even argue about that, that Allah is the most intelligent, the most uh, knowing. Uh, he's actually not most knowing, he's all knowing. I mean, which means like you... If you ask him a question, he has the answer. Any any question, doesn't matter. So this Allah who is all-knowing and Allah knows best, yet Allah, his calendar is eight days in seven weeks. Seven, seven, uh, sorry, eight days in one week. Which is really amazing. I mean, it's normal to happen. I mean, if you are Allah, things happen. To make it short, if we go in the Quran and we read the chapter 41, start reading from verse number 9. You can read verses before it, but as usual, Quran is a stupid book. There is no connection between the verse before it and the verse after it. So you will not miss a lot if you don't really read from the beginning. However, uh, just for disclaimer, so the Muslim will not say, oh, you are misquoting, etc. You can read as many verses as you want before it. And you will find that this is a really funny, stupid book. In chapter 41, actually, verse number 3, it says that this book, verses are explained in details. Is what? Is explained in details. Uh -huh. It is explained in details. So why you Muslims don't agree about the meaning of the Quran? And why the Quran itself says that there is many verses in the Quran nobody knows what they mean save Allah and what is the where is the explanation for the Quran as long as the Quran is explained in details hmm. to see to show you how much explained in details <clears throat> Look how stupid the verse after it. And this is the Muslim translation. Bashiran Nadiran. Fa'arid. You know, okay, with translation. Giving a glad tiding between two brackets of paradise, yeah, the versions and their panties off, yeah. I.e. Islamic monotheism, uh huh. And fear of Allah, okay. All kind of sin or deed. This is all is, is this is addition. This is just to explain. You see the between the bracket? I mean, the verse before it, it says that the Quran is explained in details, but the Muslims have to add twice more than the size of the verse to make it clear for us. Let me show you how big the verse in Arabic. Do you see how big it is? This is the verse which is clear in details. And look how big it is became in English because it's so clear, man. It's so clear. How many words are it is in Arabic? Let us count together. One, two, three, four, five, six. We will uh, we will make count this as as a, as a word and seven. Okay, so seven. If we count la as a word, and this is all to explain seven words. But yet the, the book is, in, is it clear. Okay. Now, to tell us at the end what? Stay away from them, they don't listen. So all of this to tell us, stay away from them, don't listen. What the heck is that? Allah advising Muhammad to stay away from them, they don't listen. What a great missionary. Then he say, <clears throat> and they say our heart are under uh, coverings. Hmm? They say that? Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is this is really the most stupid thing. Oh, anyway, this is not my topic, really. And when they ask Muhammad, 
about why you don't have miracles, why you are just, you know, uh, uh, like somebody, uh, big mouth, but you have nothing. He says, tell them I am just a human being like you. Oh, really? I'm really surprised. I thought you are a camel or something. It is only an inspiration come to me from Allah. And look here how they write the word uh, Ilahakum. Ilahakum is Ilah. <laughs> okay. One Ilah. I mean, is that a translation supposedly? No, I don't know the translation of who, who is the donkey who made the translation, but let it go. Then if we go down, we will find here in verse number 9, Allah saying to tell, uh, uh, saying to Muhammad, say, do you verily disbelieve in him who created the earth in two days? Islam Wahid wanna call me? Is he going to use a voice changer again or without voice changer? <coughs> All right. <coughs> okay, Islam Wahid, call me. I just logged in Skype. Oh God, we have a Muslim here. Let's go. Let's see this Muslim first. Hello. 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 Yes, my friend. How are you? Hello. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Are you a Muslim? You are live on air. Yes, yes. All right. What do you like to say to us? You need me. You need me to prove it. Prove what? Prove that I am a Muslim. No, I do not need it to prove. I believe you. That's it. I mean, there is no need to prove anything. But anyway, what do you want to say to us? Uh, I think my. connection is a bit slower so I cannot uh, maybe I'm slow on your YouTube don't, so you have to don't listen to me slow with me don't listen uh, to, to YouTube mute YouTube you better stop YouTube totally just to focus with me if you want okay uh, I cannot read the first if you give me the first the verse this is a chapter 41 verse number 9 we will read verse number 9 verse number 10 verse number 11 and verse number 12 Okay, uh, I follow your I follow your video, some of video, but I have uh, something about uh, I'm a, like to ask you. Maybe not about this topic today. It's okay with you. Well, we want to finish this one, but no problem. You can ask me. What do you want? I have uh, watched your video about uh, Allah Wakbar. You say that it's uh, Allah. It's uh, mean uh, for the God of the hmm. Moon. And who and who is uh, and and Abbas is uh, for the sun. Right. Is it correct? Yes, correct. Can you show me in the scripture and maybe because uh, the one told me is Allah is all all, all Ilah. It's a uh, it's a mighty God. It's a uh, it's Al is a uh, every all all is all. all right. uh, it's uh, beyond everything. It's, no uh, problem. All beyond Ilah. Okay. If you go in the Quran, if you go to chapter 6, verse number 78, you will see that according to Muhammad, when Abraham, he saw the moon, he said, this is my God, this is, uh, this is my Lord. Correct? Verse number 77, he saw the moon, he says, this is my God, he worshipped the moon. Then when he saw the sun, verse number 78, he said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. Not a greater, the word here in Arabic is Akbar. Okay. Why Abraham, he called the son Akbar, 
he did not call the moon Akbar, if the word Akbar mean a greater. Why he did not call yes, the planet? Yes, it mean greater. Hmm? Yes, it mean greater. Okay, I will go with you. If this is meaning greater, well, he should say, well, because he changed his he changed his his worship. First, he saw a planet, a, a star. Okay, and then he said, uh, "This is my God." He did not he did not call him Akbar. Then he saw the moon. He said, "Okay, this is my God." He did not call him Akbar. But when he saw the sun, he called him Akbar. Why the sun only is called Akbar? He, as you see, he is comparing between them. He is moving from from a star to a planet to uh, to the sun, which is funny because isn't it the star is a is a is a is a sun is a star anyway? But obviously the God of Islam do not know that. So when he worshipped the when he worshipped the, the the planet, you know, he said, "This is my God," but he did not say, "This is Akbar." Right? Then he saw the moon. He, uh, he did not say this is Akbar. Maybe he thinks that uh, that uh, God is uh, greater. God is uh, Akbar. Okay, but is still he is worshiping. Okay, but no problem. He is worshiping three gods. So if he is comparing between them, and the word the greater should fit with all of them because this is Akbar. So I will stay. I will stay away from the previous one. I will go to the second one, right? But as you see, the only one who call him Akbar is the sun. So uh, can you explain it uh, in Arabic maybe? So what do, can... But do you know Arabic? You're an Indonesian. What do you know in Arabic? You're Indonesian, right? Do you know Arabic? Uh, you do not know. Yes. I, I cannot. Uh, I only can read some of uh, it uh, because... Uh, my friend, I, I don't know what to explain to you. Here we go. It says, فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ بَازِغَةً قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرُ So when he said the sun is rising, he said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. And Akbar, you know, is in the same, like in Arabic, we have like, we have a, like a, the same as in English. You say great, greater, greatest, greater, you know. So this is the same in Arabic. Kabir, Akbar, Kabir, which means big. Akbar is bigger. And here there's a mistake because you cannot say Allah is Akbar if Allah is God. You compare him to what? I cannot hear you. you. Okay. Do you hear me? I will, I will repeat again. You hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. The word Akbar is to compare between, it can, in Arabic, it can come for age. As an example, I can say, uh, my brother Akbar, which means he is older. So for years, number of years. Akbar, it can be for size. Akbar, it can be for a value. All right. So if here yes. it's about a value, well, the, you know, how he value them. I mean, the first one is a, is a star. The second one is a, is a planet. The first one is a planet. The second one is a planet. And the third one is a star. So what is the value between them? He did not use anything. He, he, it cannot be the age. It cannot be uh, the value. Because what is the value between them? I mean, all of them, this is funny. And it cannot be uh, uh, anything except uh, this is the name of the sun. Because if he's saying the sun is bigger, if he's saying the sun is bigger from those who yes. he worship, that would be funny how he knew that the sun is bigger. Mm. Bigger than what? And the second you compare between... Uh, maybe, bigger, maybe bigger than moon, maybe bigger than star. Okay, but uh, uh, how he knew that he's bigger than a star? And why he is using the word Akbar? You know, I mean, so you see, by agreeing with that, you just uh, agreed that he is comparing the size, right? Yes, because uh, okay. when the sun is shining, it, All right. it, it so, shines uh, the whole earth. Okay, I will go with you. So as long as Akbar is about the size, well, when you are Muslim, you say Allah Akbar, you are comparing the size of Allah to what? Uh, it's uh, bigger, the, big, uh, the, the most big. God in universe, maybe. Uh, Thank you very much, guys. This God is bigger. Did you hear it? He is the most big God. Okay, that's that's perfect. So Allah is bigger. That's mean he is bigger by size from other gods. So you Muslims worship an yes. idol because idols have size, and the Allah size is yes, big. because we 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 did not accept another God la ilah. Yeah, no, you did. You just admitted that there's other God because he said you said he is the bigger, he is the biggest God. So he is bigger God than the other gods. 
if he is the only one, you don't say Akbar because he is the only one. There's no need to say Akbar. If I say to you, you are bigger, that's mean bigger than what? I have to continue. I say, uh, Mr. Faisal is, is, is bigger than Mr. Uh, Muhammad, right? So I'm comparing between your size. So, but if there's only one Faisal in the whole world, he's the only human. I cannot say you are bigger than an apple. I cannot compare between a human being and an apple, right? We have to compare between from the same kind. In language, you don't compare. You don't compare between, uh, uh, you know, an apple and a camel. That would be funny. So you don't say the camel is bigger than an apple. So you compare between two apples or two camels, correct? Okay. Okay. So when I say Allah is Akbar, Akbar from what? From which? From uh, there is other Allah? say that anymore <laughs> okay so you know I, I, I obviously this is something wrong here and as you see in the verse after it it says that he Abraham is a Hanif Hanif is an Aramaic word mean Kafir is a Hanif so the Muslim they say we are Hanif the fact he is saying and I am I am a Kafir I am from the Mushrikeen so Muhammad he do not know what the word Hanif mean he copied it he do not this is not an Arabic word this is an Aramaic word and all of us we knew that Abraham is an Aramaic so he speaks in Aramaic saying, I am a Kafir. And then Muhammad, he took the word Hanif and he put it in his Quran. And now you Muslim, you say, I am a Hanif too. Okay. Mm. Now here you notice something very funny in the story. How Abraham, he learned about Allah. Where, where, where in the story, Allah, he spoke to him. Where, do you see anything in the story? Suddenly this guy, he is worshiping the moon. And why he worshiped the moon? There is no reason. Then why he did not worship the moon? It's a stupid reason. He said, I don't like the one who disappear. I mean, why didn't Abraham notice that the moon... Yes, I have read that, that uh, he didn't like the sun because the sun said... He Thank you. Like okay, but this is mean. But, yeah, but this is accepted. If I am, I never saw the sun set before. Because it's like I'm surprised I worship this moon. And then this moon disappeared. So this is the first time ever for me I see that the, sun, that the moon disappeared. That's mean like Abraham was an alien in a, in a spaceship and he came to the earth and this is his first night. He saw the moon. He said, oh, this is my God. And then second day, the moon is gone. So he said, you know what? I'm not going to worship the moon. So, But Abraham is born in this earth. So he saw the moon millions of times coming and going, coming and going. So why he is saying, I don't, I'm not going to worship the one who disappeared? He did not know that before he worshiped him. The, the worship the moon. You know what I mean? No. Okay. Well, don't he knew already? Abraham. He is a man already. He's a man, correct? Don't yes, he? Yes, don't yes, don't yes. Th didn't he see the moon before disappear? Before he start worshiping the moon, he saw the moon disappear, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So yes. why he reject the moon to be his lord? Because he discovered that the moon disappear when he saw the moon already disappear. He knew about it. I have no idea. Okay, the same for the star, the same for the sun. Like this guy, he, he, you know, okay, the sun is my God. Okay, and then I don't like the one who disappeared. But don't you know that the sun disappeared too? Is that a surprise yes. for you? So the story here is stupid, it's silly, it does not make any sense. But uh, it's also in Christianity, you believe in Abraham, right? My friend, uh, we believe in Abraham. God, he came to Abraham, he spoke to him in Christianity, in the Bible. God himself, he spoke to him. Here, what happened? Where is who? Who told who told Abraham about God? What happened? Tell me what happened. I'm listening to you. I'm, I want to learn from you. How Abraham? Hey, Abraham now is worshiping the planet. Is worshiping the plant? I mean the planet. He worshiping the stars. He's worshiping the sun. Okay, how he learned about Allah according to Islam? What is the story? Okay. Hmm. There's no story. It's a silly story. How he learned about the name Allah? How, who, where did he get the name from? Did Jibreel come to him? No. Okay, so how he learned about that God, his name is Allah? <coughs> uh, it's not say that, uh, so I cannot say that. Uh, well, I will go to, I don't know. Yeah, but how he knew that the name of this God is Allah? There's there's millions of names. How he chose Allah? Why where, where he come with the name from? 
Did Allah speak to him? As you see, I didn't see anything here where it says Allah, he came to Abraham, he said to him, I am your God, like the story of Moses. The story of Moses, God, he appeared to Moses in the bushes as a fire, right? And then when, yes. when he, Moses came to him, in the Bible, you know, he said to him, I am, you know, I am Yahweh, and or, I am who I am. This is what the word means. I am who I am. And this is my name, which means there's really no name can contain contain me. I am I am the person who exists by himself. And he and but he reads on to see the story of how Abraham became a believer. You Muslim don't know. Not a single Muslim have an okay. idea. Okay. Hmm. So the story of okay, Abraham, uh, the story of Abraham, uh, obviously it's a theft. He stole it from the Jews, but he have no idea what to say. Um, also about uh, let's change to another question. Maybe uh, I accept this. I accept this right now. But okay. I have uh, more things to do. I have more things to ask you about. Uh, explain about you said in Lila in Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, you say it wrong. What saying what wrong? Teach me. I, I want to learn. You, I, I I I I saw your videos uh, hmm. in. Uh, Indonesian translation. <laughs> you say that uh, you you quote uh, there's wrong with Lila in Alhamdulillah. Hmm. What's wrong with that? Okay. Do you see the first? Um, uh, if we look at the word, you can look at the word in your phone if you are using your phone. You will see that Allah is not the same as word in verse number two. This is chapter one, verse number one, and verse number two. So if if your name is Faisal, we cannot take the letter F from your name, correct? Can we? Yes, yes, it's Alif, Alif. Okay, I'm, talk I'm talking uh, generally speaking. Your name is Faisal, so we cannot take your uh, your letter, the first letter from the, the name, can we? This is your name, I will type it in yes. the screen. Okay, Faisal. Yes. Okay, can we take the letter F from your name? Or it is not allowed, because this is a name, we cannot take it off, correct? Yes. All right, so here we have the name Allah. In the first verse, and we see that Allah starts with the letter Alif. Okay, what happened to the verse number two? Where is the where is the Alif is gone? Did the rabbit eat it? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Well, I, I see I'm trying to help you because if this is part of the name, here we go. Here, this is the letter A in the beginning. We cannot find it here. It's gone. This A here is gone. What happened? Simply because this is not part of the name. So Alhamdulillah, li la in Arabic li mean to. La is the name of your God. Alhamdulillah, Rabbul Alamin. So Alhamdulillah, li in Arabic is equal equal to two in English. Right? Okay. Okay. So, Alhamdu, thanks, Li, to, Hu, La. Thank you very much. This is the name of your God. And what La is mean? La, is, La, La, right? La is the name of the moon of the moon God. You can go and search it in Google right away. La is the name of the moon God. The moon God is not the moon itself. Is the is the God who is in control of the moon. You said that Muhammad is cannot be a prophet for us uh, in Indonesia. So you said that if it was, uh, God want to send us a messenger, they must speak in our tongue. Exactly. Uh, but uh, and you say that you say that uh, that Muhammad cannot speak in our tongue. But we in here we, in Indonesia we got Habib. We got what? It's uh, descendants Habib. How, how to say Hab Habib? Habib, you got a donkey. You what Habib, you got, Habib? Yeah, it's, it's okay, a hold on, it's, hold on, hold on. From my friend, the my friend, the descendant from the prophet is Indonesian. Are you crazy? I mean, the guy is an Arab. His son is Indonesian. Secondly, the Quran says that Muhammad he have no children, he have no men. So how he became descendant? Secondly, if I have a descendant, he is born in China. So now by the prophet, he was sent only to this descendant. Because if this is his descendant, if he is an Arab, 
Let us say he's an Arab. Huh? That means he is sent only for that Arab because the Quran is so clear. Allah will never send any messenger unless he is from the people speaking the tongue of the people. So you are saying to me, there's a guy he claim, his name, you call him Habib, I call him donkey because obviously he's a fraud. Muhammad have no children. And even the Quran says, Muhammad was not the father of any of your children. So the Quran says, we never send a messenger unless he is from the people to the people, speaking the tongue of the people, the person in front of you. So in order for Muhammad to come to you as an Indonesian, he have to speak your tongue. He have to be Indonesian. And you know, Indonesian have many languages, not only one. Correct? Yes. Okay. So Muhammad, he cannot be, if he came to Indonesia, he have to be from one of the ethnic group of Indonesia, speak in their tongue, which means he cannot be for all Indonesia anyway. So he is sent to the Arab, speak in the tongue of the Arab, and the Quran say clearly why, which makes sense. Why? So they might understand. To make it clear for them and that makes sense yes, but it is it is same it is the same because of his descendants my friend is the habib is descendants okay what this guy have so to do he, uh, okay hold on he, is he is, uh, is he all of indonesia he is this guy is all of indonesia the prophet was sent to the indonesian or to this guy Sent to Arabic, but, uh, no, 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 listen, 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 listen. focus with me, focus with me, focus, focus. Muhammad was sent for the people or only for one person? Yes. Okay, he was sent for the people, read it in the Quran, this is your translation. He sent to his own people, you know what, I'm going to can show you. you can, can you change it to Indonesia? I will make it Indonesian, no problem, even though I do not know what they are saying in Indonesian language. But let us see. Uh, here we go. Basha, Indonesia. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see there's a lot in Indonesia. All right. Live chat in okay. Right in now. Indonesian, it should it should see it should see that it says that he sent okay. to his own people. Does it say that in Indonesian language? I put it for you in the, in the Basha language. He should speak the tongue of the people, his people. Kami tidak mengutus orang rasul pun melainkan dengan bahasa kaum. Sebab ia dapat memberi penjelasan dengan kepada mereka. Maka Allah menyesatkan siapa yang dia kendaki dan memberi penunjuk kepada siapa yang dia kendaki. Dan dialah Tuhan yang kuasa lagi maha bijaksana. Hmm. So translate to me what what it says here. I do not know what he's saying. Well, it's uh, God will not send any prophets uh, except it's from our kind. Our it's kind. From, uh, from your people, our kind of our language, and you uh, speak our language, and from the people, right? From so the people, can, and speak the language of the so people. He can give a, give a, make it clear. Give, give an explanation to us. Make it clear to us. Thank you. So we can understand what is it. Thank you. Perfect. So Allah will never send a messenger. This is He is not saying there's exception. When we never send, never, never, any messenger except in the tongue of his people, which means he, he speak the tongue and he have to be from them. So how Muhammad is a prophet for you? Okay, maybe he's not prophet, but... Uh... So what he is, he's not a prophet. So uh, our friend Faisal from Indonesia, he called me as a Muslim and now he agreed that Muhammad is not a prophet. So what he is? Uh, he's a prophet for the Arabic people, maybe. Okay, he's a prophet for the Arab people. Okay, that means still he's a fraud. Because if he is a person in different place saying, I'm going to send you, go and fight and do jihad and convert people to Islam. But the Quran says he should be only a prophet for the Muslims. That means a fraud. And you are believing in a fraud. He's not your prophet. So, if he's not a prophet... Why the Habib say that they are the one who, who was sent? My friends, what Habib? This guy is a fraud. They claim to be Al Qazafi. He claimed to be from the children of Muhammad. As Sadat, the president who they killed him, the Muslim Brotherhood, he claimed to be from the family of Muhammad. Jamal Abdul Nasser, they claim that he is from the family of Muhammad. Saddam Hussein, they claim that he is from the family of Muhammad. Erdogan, he claimed to be from the family of Muhammad. Every scumbag in the world, he claimed to be from the family of Muhammad. 
But Muhammad in Quran says Muhammad was not the father of any of your children. And all of us we knew that Muhammad he don't have a children. So how they became his children? And anyway, what does this have to do with him being a prophet? And how this guy, he's a child of Muhammad, he became in Indonesia. What happened? There's a hurricane took him by the wind, took him there. Do he look Asian or he look like an Arab? Half Arab, Arab Indonesian, maybe. Uh, yeah, so he. Uh, <laughs> this is a fraud. He make you know, so he can receive donation. People give him money. He claimed that he's from Prophet Muhammad. So what if you're from Muhammad? Okay. Uh, okay. Let me ask you something about in the Bible about Joshua. Hmm. What about Joshua? Who uh, uh, I, I have read about uh, your video about uh, about creation of the world. You say that in uh, Quran is not match the word. I have I have seen your video. They say that uh, Allah forget how uh, the, the 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 how to say that. Uh, Allah forget the, the sequence. The, the, the order, creation. yeah, the order how he created. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes, so. Uh, Maybe there's some mistakes in the uh, Quran, uh, say that uh, there's uh, misleading hmm. creations, but also there's uh, maybe so something that uh, bug me in the Bible also that Joshua, this, uh, Joshua hmm. when he's in the war, he hmm. stopped the sun. He did How not. is it possible? You see, this is not about creation. This, it's not possible. This is God miracle. He is not the one who stopped the sun. You know, this is a miracle. How it's possible that Jesus is a son of women who have no uh, no, no husband? That's not impossible. That's not not possible. This is a miracle. So you are not a questioning science now. You are a questioning miraculous act of God. It's not Him who stopped the sun. Nobody can stop the sun save God. So all what happened? Let us say He froze the time. That's it. Everything froze. Can God do that? Yes, He can. <laughs> But in the Quran, we cannot find the solution how Allah, he says something very funny. Like now in front of us, it says that he created the earth in two days. And then this is chapter number 41, verse number 9. And then verse number 10, he placed therein an earth mountain above it in four days. But this is the total six days. And then after that, he did finish the sky in two days. This is the total is eight. The Muslim to solve this problem, they say, oh, no, no, hold on. In verse number 10, the verse saying four days, that is include the two days in the beginning. That would be stupid. Why? Because when the Muslim they translate, they try to cover the shame. If you know a little bit of Arabic, or you can copy this actually sentence right now and take it to Google Translation, you will see here the letter is wa. Wa mean and. And. So this is in order. First, he created the earth in two days. And then and he placed there in mountain so muhammad is speaking in order and what come and after the two days all of it is finished in four days so the muslims in order to cover the shame here they say no the four days here is including the two days the verse is so clear but there's only a way to solve it because this is a clear contradiction the same if we go to the hadith we find muhammad making another popo as usual muhammad here in this hadith he said that allah he uh, 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 he created the earth, uh, the, the the clay in Saturday, and then uh, 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 the, the 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 mountains in Mon in, in Sunday, uh, uh, the trees in in uh, Monday, and uh, etc. But if we calculate the numbers, we will find that there are seven days. This this is the height in front of you. So Muhammad it cannot it cannot be consistent with his own story. This is the same person. Uh, wait, is, is this uh, Sahih? This is Sahih, yeah, this is Sahih Muslim. Here we go. This is Sahih Muslim. The name of the book is Sahih, so imagine if it's wrong. <laughs> the name of the book is Sahih, but the inside is is, is bad. <laughs> so this is a Sahih. If you calculate the words, you know, that the number of days, Saturday, you know, let me, let me, let me type them for you in the screen so you can see with me. This is day number one, Saturday. Okay, Saturday is number one. Wonderful. Hmm. Then Saturday he created the clay. Then uh, Sunday he created the mountains. Okay, this is number two. Wonderful. Yes. All right. 
Then he created the trees in Monday. This is number three. Great. Then he created uh, uh, entire labor in Tuesday. Okay, this is number four. This is day number four. And then he created the light in Wednesday, and this is number five. And then he caused the anima to spread in, in, in Thursday, and this is their number six. Here we should stop. That's it. And then he created Adam in a Friday after afternoon. <laughs> this is number seven. <laughs> Friday afternoon. <laughs> Where is the where is the Quran's verses saying Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days? And then the chapter 41 says it is eight days. And here the hadith says seven days. So which one of them is correct? Simply because he's a fraud. He cannot maintain his tongue. He, you know, he's a guy. He have a big mouth. He keep talking. And the more he talk, the more he do poo poo. Okay. Um... I'm out of what already, but... Um, You're out of what? You're out of Islam? You decide to leave Islam now? No, no, no. If, 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 if really uh, Muhammad and Islam is a fake, why there's a lot of uh, Ustad here, Habib here, Sunan here, Money, uh, money, Arabic, money, there is a... There, understand about this. Money, money, all money. They make five thousands every speech. Imagine every speech, go and read the article. Five thousand dollars at least for making a speech. They are living like kings from the poor people of Indonesia. This is it's money, it's business, it's a fraud. My friend, for money, people they do a lot of things. You never heard of people doing porn? What what people do in porn? They take if the off their panty for the sake of what? For money. So for money, people do crazy stuff. So are you surprised? That somebody he called himself Ustaz, but in fact he is a fraud. And he but, is. And why this he Ustaz? Came, he came, mm, go ahead. But he came from. Uh, he came. He learned from Egypt. He, he got a degree. From it's, Egypt. it's a business. Like, he can go to. Abdul, he go, he Ustaz, go, like Ustaz Abdul Soman. My friend, he did not come from Egypt. He studied there for a few weeks. He came back to Indonesia. He claimed to be a scholar, but he is a potato. I challenge him to debate me. He ran away like a <laughs> like like a like a puppy. If he is a scholar, you're gonna say that he's a potato. He's a potato, absolutely. All those ustas in Indonesia, they are potatoes. Otherwise, why they don't call me? Here we go. My Skype is open. If you can call me, why they cannot call me? Did I did I meet you before? Did I ask you who are you before? No, right? You just called no, me, no. and I took your call. This they can do the same. They can surprise me, and then every, let every Indonesian see that Christian prince. Maybe he know nothing about Islam, but they, they were not there because they are potatoes. What Somat? Somat is potato. Somat is not even a potato. He is he is a damaged potato. So do you mean that they already know the truth, but they are not speaking the truth? My friend, it's none of my business who know the truth or not. My business is to share the truth. But there is no way that those people who they are watching my videos and either are they Christian Prince is not telling the truth and they should defend the Indonesian because a lot of Indonesian leave Islam every day because of me every day so shouldn't they call me and debate me and prove me wrong so they can stop the bleed of Muslims leaving and leaving Islam in Indonesia so if they are really truthful they should debate me so they can protect the Indonesian people from somebody like me maybe because maybe he's lying maybe Christian Prince is lying so let us get him busted so but they will not dare to do that because they are coward, they are potato, and they knew I'm saying the truth, and I, I show it in the screen, and nobody dare to debate me. If he if he call me, he will lose his job, nobody will hire him anymore. The same as even those who speak Arabic in the in, in YouTube, those potato, Mimi and Fifi and etc. All of them they are potato, don't dare to call me. So my friend, I invite you right now to leave Islam. You are smarter than this. Do you believe really, uh, Faisal, do you believe really that Shaitan, he take care of from your ace, uh, from your ass when you pray? No. Okay. Do you believe that Shaitan, he fought when you pray? <laughs> no. Okay. So how do you believe in Muhammad? How you can believe in such a garbage? I mean, you are a human being. You are a smart. 
and you there is no way such a foolish teaching you know will uh, will 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 make you believe in such a uh, belief so how you are a, a human being in the year 2020 you have internet you have a smartphone you go to school uh, uh, you know and yet you believe in such a garbage <clears throat> do do you know that shaitan he sleep in your nose no you never felt something inside your nose when you sleep I also uh, show you uh, see your video last night oh. about uh, Muta Muta. Yeah. You say this. Uh, hello. Can yeah. You hear I hear you. I hear you. Go ahead. Uh, about Muta. Uh, yesterday I saw about Muta and uh, the woman you speak. Uh, it's a uh, Sina. We have. We have Muta also in Indonesia. We call it Kawin Contract. If Indonesian read it here, uh, uh, see this. You see, the, that, the uh, Muslim Shia, the Muslim Shia, they call it Muta. The Muslim Sunni, they are hypocrite. They do it, but they give it different name. They call it. Uh, no, no. In Indonesia, we know it uh, with the name with Kawin Contract. Maybe, maybe there is a lot of Indonesia here uh, also hear it, but. Uh, yeah, we brought, uh, we we make it happen in initial with Kawin contract. So when you uh, Arabic come anyway, anyway, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you, all in, Muslims they uh, practice muta Faisal. All Muslims they practice muta, but the difference is Sunni or hypocrite they give it different name. It is muta at the end of the day. So they have the wajah friend, they have the wajah monsieur, they have the wajah student. Like you are going, you're going to study. Brother, I'm going to study for three months in Los Angeles. I, I cannot take my wife with me. She is big and heavy. Can I marry there temporarily for three months? Absolutely, brother. You can do it. So the Muslim, they practice that. Doesn't matter what their sect. But the Shia are more honest. They keep, keep, they keep the name. They keep it, call it Muta. The Muslim Sunni, they are hypocrite. They change the name, but they still practice it. Yes, we are Sunni here. Yeah, you are Sunni, right? Yes. Okay. Shia is a bad. Hmm. So what do you think now? You are Sunni, and Shaitan he he piss in your ears. Do you see? Do you did you see the piss of Shaitan in your ears, as a Sunni? No, no. Well, how come? No. Don't you see the wax in your ears, my friend? There is wax. This is the Shaitan piss in your ears. Muhammad says that. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the hadith. Protect the, me from the, the hadith. <laughs> The hadith in front of you, the, the reason you blow your nose before in the morning, as Muhammad, he said, you have to put water when you do ablution too. Why? Because shaitan, he sleep in your nose and he piss in your ears. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, what, what, you will leave Islam or you will stay as a Muslim now? What happened? I, I, I cannot doubt doubt it uh, uh, already but uh, what you know will have if I leave it yeah but you are smart I mean make a decision you will not believe in such a garbage yes yes if I leave it what kind of religion that, that I have first to, first you leave it first you leave it say I am out of the garbage of Islam and then we can discuss about what you can believe in I will not say that a uh, garbage but uh, it's an insult Okay. Uh, we also know that in, in Indonesia it's very insulting. Okay, so say, uh, are you willing to say I am out of Islam? Do you are you leaving Islam? Uh, uh, it's 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 uh, they 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 have been teach me from the child from the when I was born they give me asan. Yeah, but then now it's time to leave Islam. So. Are you? Are you? Did you decide to leave this? I mean, look at this. Muhammad is making fun of you. Do you know? Okay, uh, 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 Faisal, have you ever raised your head before the Imam finished the prayer? Yeah. Have you ever? Have you ever raised your head like when they are praying? You bow down, and but like let us say by mistake, you raise your head before the Imam. He raised his head too. Did you do that before? All Muslims do that. Yes. Okay. But Muhammad, he said. If a Muslim he do that, Allah will make his head a head of a donkey. Is your head as a head of a donkey now? <laughs> no, of course not. 
Okay, so uh, obviously Muhammad is a fraud. He's fooling you. He's lying to you. So why you wanna stay is as a Muslim? Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Said the Prophet said, "Isn't it he who raised his head before the Imam, afraid that Allah made me transform his head into that of a donkey?" And I'm, I'm looking at your picture now in uh, in uh, Skype. You don't look like a donkey for me. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> uh, my friend also not like a donkey. Yeah, you see, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to insult you, but I'm, I'm showing you that this is stupid. So, why you don't say I am out of Islam? Because obviously, this is a religion full of fairy tale stories. Muhammad making fun of people. He cannot be a prophet of God. This is a lie. There's nobody believing in this garbage. You see, look at, look how stupid this statement. If somebody rape a woman, Allah will not make his head the head of a donkey. If somebody rape a child, Allah will not make his head as a head of a donkey. But if you raise your head before the Imam, Allah will make your head the head of a donkey. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's, it, uh, okay. So what, are you out of Islam? Is it uh, make me a murtad? Hmm? Is it make me a murtad? Yeah, that will make you more tad, yeah. Are you scared to say I am out of Islam? Because then that... Who will save my soul then? Huh? Who saved my soul? For sure not Muhammad. Muhammad is busy making your head the head of a donkey now. <laughs> Muhammad, no, him but, uh, Muhammad I himself... Muhammad himself... I'm leaving it. Uh, they will stone me. They will kill me. They will something like that. Okay, well, you, do, you don't have to go on the street and say, hey, I'm out of Islam. You know, just leave Islam and uh, search for the truth by yourself. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm leaving it. Okay, wonderful. Now ask me any question you want. I, Me as a Christian, I invite you to accept Jesus the Christ as your Savior. I'm happy for you that now you are clear from the virus of the stupid teaching of Muhammad. And now I invite you to accept Jesus. Do you have any question for me about the Messiah? Yes, because uh, living, living it, it doesn't make me a Christian, right? No, absolutely. Because you have to believe. And, you know, for us as a Christian, it's not saying Shahada will make you a Christian. It's believing in Christ will make you a Christian. Uh, say, uh, can you prove me that, uh, that Jesus is, uh, is really that, is, is really crucified? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to show you from the Bible because all the Bible says that, but I will show you from the Quran, the stupid Quran itself. The Quran says it clearly okay. that Jesus was a crucified. How we can prove that? Okay. If we go to the verse, which is the verse supposedly denying his crucifixion, this verse actually proving that Jesus was crucified. I mean, the man who made this verse, he, 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 he suffered from mental illness. This is your Indonesian language in the screen. I want you to read for me and tell me what it says. Chapter 4, verse 157. Dan karena ucapan mereka sesungguhnya kami telah membunuh Almasih Isa Putra Maryam Rasulullah. Padahal mereka tidak membunuhnya dan tidak pula menyalipnya. Tapi yang mereka Okay. All right. So now to translate for me, you see, my my Indonesian language is not good. The only word I know is the book. Like Muhammad is the book. Now tell me what happened. There. <laughs> uh, they said that we we killed the uh, Isa Putra Maryam Rasulullah, but they actually didn't kill it or they didn't crucify it because they make it look like somebody else. Thank yeah, you very much. What, okay. Uh, start also told us. Stop. Stop, Faisal. Guys, did you hear what Faisal C said? He said, Allah make him, make someone look like Jesus. Look how stupid the story. By saying that, he confirmed, yes. he confirmed that the people who they are there, they saw someone look exactly like Jesus, correct? Yes, exactly okay. like. Now, so I can say, okay, it, I can they, say they now. They crucified the, the Faisal, wrong guy. Faisal, wait, hold. I can say right now that the, the Muhammad, who the Muslim they saw in Mecca, he was not Muhammad. This is, was me. He looked exactly like me. I look like him. I mean, I mean, this is a joke. If his mother was there, the disciple of Jesus was there, 
and thousands of Jews who witnessed Jesus and they spoke to him, they were there. The judges were there. And everybody who knows Jesus was there. And yet nobody discovered that this is not Jesus. So how this story can make sense? And how we can trust after now anyone we see? Because maybe Jibreel is not Jibreel. Maybe Allah is not Allah. Maybe Muhammad is not Muhammad. Maybe Faisal is not Faisal. Maybe Christian Prince is not a Christian Prince. Maybe my TV is my radio. Maybe my computer is my phone. Maybe my cat is my dog. Maybe my dog is my cow. Because you never know. Allah playing games. So how we can trust such a stupid story? The story confirmed that the Christian there and the Jews, they, <coughs> they witness that they killed Jesus and he looked exactly like Jesus. Now where is the proof that this is not Jesus? If he looked exactly like Jesus. <coughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but that means that the two person, right? This is not the problem now. The problem is how Muhammad, he can prove this. Muhammad, he came 600 years after that. He says to us, ah, 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 ah. this is, was not Jesus. He looked like Jesus. <laughs> I mean, this is the most stupid. <laughs> imagine, imagine people, they go, uh, uh, the police came, somebody got shot. And then we take him, we take him to hospital. And the judge, he want to, he want to judge the one who killed this person. This person, he said to them, I did not kill this guy. He looked like him. <laughs> I mean, this is the most stupid story ever. So how we can, how we can depend in such a naive, stupid story? I mean, do people have a brain? Do people even have a, have a, have a, like one percent of a brain? So in order to swallow this dummy, stupid story, you have to be dummy yourself. And slow to the point, you, you live in a small, slow motion. By the time you finish the verse, the, the, you know, you will be dead. So the it's, verse in the front very, of us, it's... the verse in front of us, Faisal, confirm that the Jews, they say, we killed Jesus. They are not saying maybe, they say we killed, all right? And then they say, the Quran says, they killed him not. Well, I can should be halahum, which means Allah he made someone look like him, and that is the most stupid argument ever. Because as long they saw someone look like Jesus, will Muhammad he have to prove that this is not Jesus? Otherwise, anyone can say, Well, Muhammad was not Muhammad, Jibreel was not Jibreel, Allah was not Allah, Christian Prince was not Christian Prince. Who what Muhammad he did not see Jibreel, Muhammad he saw the cat, you know, but it looked looked like Jibreel, but it was a cat. It, 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 it's very mind-blowing when you say that, uh, when you say that kind of perspective, because we always, or, uh, we always, we always being teach that uh, it's uh, make, uh, save him and, and make him alive. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it, it's very okay. mind-opening so, so, when you say that uh, with this different perspective, it's very, uh, okay. My friend, we, we have to open, we, we, we have to be smart. God, he gave us a gift. You, 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 you are not a slow person. God gave you a gift, my friend. God, he gave me brain. He gave you brain too. Not, I'm not only me have a brain. You have a brain and maybe your brain is better than me, but we need to use it. You know, sometimes because we are un under the influence of a lot of things around us, we don't want to think. So we take it, we accept it with our thinking. But as you see, this is a stupid story. It does not make sense in any way, in any mean. And in the same time, if Allah saved Jesus, what, what is the point of this is uh, this uh, like he made someone look like him? Because here, what look what happened. When Allah, he made someone look like Jesus, he created the Christianity, if this is true. Because the Christians, if there is no crucifixion, they will not believe the whole Christianity is gone. So the one who created Christianity based on this verse is Allah. He is the deceiver. That will make Allah shaitan. Why the Christians believe that Jesus was died die, die, die in the cross? The Quran says Allah made someone look like him, according to the Muslim uh, understanding. But this is mean that the one who made the Christians misleaded is Allah. So right now we have more than 3 billion human beings who they are Christians are misleaded by the big fat liar Allah. In also in uh, in the Bible we say also Allah 
No, my friend, this, no, this is, no, 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 this is a translation. This is false translation in Arabic in the Middle East too. The Arabic Bible translation, translation, not the Bible. Translation, say the word Allah. You, you make a translation right now. You can use any word you want, but this is not a true uh, uh, word. This is a false translation, my friend. We have nothing to do with Allah. You see, the God of the Muslims is not a spirit. Our God is a spirit. The, the name is not the problem between us and Islam. Let us say the Muslim, they change the name of their God and they call him Yahweh. They call him Jehovah. They call him Elohim. They call him Hashim. They call him uh, Emmanuel, whatever they call him. Still, that will not make their God our God. Our God is different in nature. Our God is holy. Their God is not. Their God is pimp. He's making a lot of women right now as we speak, preparing them for boom, boom. You know, this guy, this guy is, uh, is busy building, building a pimp house. Our God is holy, our God is a spirit, our God, uh, he's everywhere, our God, he came as a man, our God, uh, uh, he, he, he is capable of doing everything, Allah, he cannot, like if you ask a Muslim, can Allah come as a man, they will say no, okay, our God can, can Allah have a son, they say no, or our God can, can Allah, and even, even the Quran, because the Quran is made by a stupid idiot, he says, how Allah can have a son if he don't have a girlfriend? I mean, look at this logic. Claiming that the reason for God to have a son is girlfriend. But that means God is not God. Because this is only work with the human being. Me, myself, I don't have a son. Why? Because I don't have a woman. So I need a woman so I can have a son. That's, that's simple. But that will not work for God. For God is almighty. He did not need a woman to have a son. So Muhammad obviously is a stupid. He understood that when the Christian says that Jesus is son of God, that means God, he have a wife, her name is Mary, and they have a baby, his name is Jesus. <laughs> and that is the most stupid understanding for Christianity. So Muhammad obviously is a fraud, he's a stupid, he don't understand Christianity. He don't even understand the nature of his God. You know, if we ask any, any, if we ask any Muslim right now about Allah, who, who's Allah? Muhammad, he said nothing to them about Allah. Nothing. But, uh, but uh, when when the time of Muhammad, there's uh, already Christian, right? There is a Christian for sure, yeah. Uh, okay. So so you're saying that Muhammad is uh, it's a make it um, make its own cult by from Christian and Jewish something like that. Muhammad in the beginning, Muhammad he was uh, he's a fraud. So in the beginning, he tried to attract the Jews uh, uh, and the Sabi and, and, the, and, and the Nasara. He have a Nasara around him. He didn't have really Christians in his area. He married from Khadija, who she is Nasara. She is like Jehovah Witnesses. She is not a Christian. Nasara are false Christians. So Muhammad, he in the beginning, he wanted the Jews to believe in him. So he said, I believe in Moses. I believe in your God. I believe in Abraham. So he start believing in anything they say. To the point, anything the Jews they say, Muhammad, he accepted immediately. As an example, uh, when the Jews, they say to him that the most of torture is the punishment of the, the, for the, in the grave is urine, Muhammad, he took it, he make it part of his religion. So he come with the conclusion that the most torture Allah, he do to a human being is because of urine. Have you ever heard of a God he torture you because of urine? Why? You know, why? Because the Jews, they say so. Muhammad is a thief. He heard the Jews saying so. He accepted, he believed it, he put it in his religion. So when Muhammad, he copied from the Jews, it's just to make the Jews accept him. He copied from the Christian, so he, will, he, he hoped that the Christian would accept him. When the Jews and the Christian did not accept him, uh, uh, you know, he decided to kill them all. He said... As an example, he said, even the Sabian, the Sabian, they worship stars. How the Sabian, they will go to heaven? Because in the beginning, uh, uh, Muhammad, he was desperately looking for believers. Anyone, just believe in me. <laughs> in chapter 2, look at the chapter 2. Verse number 62, it says, Those who they are, believe uh, 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 from the Jews, uh, those who we believe and those who they are the Jews and those who they are the Nasara and those who they are the Sabian. Okay, hold on. 
how the Sabi and they will go to heaven they worship stars how they can go to heaven what how what is their way what is their way how they bought their ticket to heaven by what by worshiping stars the Sabi and are the same people of, of, of Abraham Abraham when he is he, he live in Iraq those are the people how the Sabi and who they are supposedly the Quran the verses we showed you when when Abraham he said I am Hanif I'm not going to worship your God how the same people became going to heaven because he's a fraud because, uh, because... did you watch did, 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 did you watch the American uh, election in the American election Obama as an example uh, uh, when he, he he have a meeting with the atheist he make fun of the Christian Bible he go to the church he pray he hold the Bible in his hand he's a Christian he meet with the Jews he wear the hat of the Jews he go to the Muslim he say my Muslim faith you know he changed his religion they bent in the meeting this is Muhammad Muhammad with the Jew he's a Jew with the Nasari he's a Nasara with the Sabian he's a Sabian and with the pagan Arab he is a pagan Arab he even worshiped the three daughters of Allah and after he said that those are three daughters of Allah it's a must to enter to us uh, hope for intercession pray for them uh, he got busted the, the the one who followed him he said you saw us, he said to us this is uh, not good you said to us this is not right and now you are worshiping the three daughters of Allah so Muhammad he claimed just to protect himself that the one who gave him this verse was shaitan <laughs> so, so here I go here, here again we find the story again that shaitan is not Jibreel is not Jibreel Jibreel is shaitan because who will give him the verse Jibreel who look shaitan who look like Jibreel so look like the story of he look like is all over Islam shaitan he can come as Jibreel uh, Allah he can make someone look like Jesus uh, uh, you know I mean it's endless uh, if you remember the story of Suleiman shaitan he come to Suleiman wife in the look of Suleiman and he took the ring from her Suleiman he went to the bathroom you know we are we go to the bathroom a lot and the Jews too you know Jews and Arab we go to the bathroom we spend the whole day in the bathroom what we can do <laughs> so Suleiman he went to the bathroom and he cannot go to the bathroom and he have the ring of Allah with him no way the holy water ring no way <laughs> so he decided he cannot take it inside the bathroom because it's holy so he gave always the ring to his wife before he entered the bathroom when he was in the bathroom shaitan he took the look of Abraham oops and then he came to his wife and he told his wife give me my ring his wife she looked at him she said okay this is uh, this is my husband she gave him the ring when the husband he went out from the bathroom obviously he stayed there for seven years he found that the the, the shaitan became the king and they kicked him out of the of the of the of the palace I mean who in the world can believe in such a story so Abraham, uh, you know, Ibrahim is not Ibrahim because there's someone look like Ibrahim too. Shaitan is not Shaitan because Shaitan he looked like Jibreel. Jibreel is not Jibreel because Jibreel looked like Shaitan. And not only that, Muhammad he said that Allah he sent to him Jibreel, and Jibreel he have the look of Dahi al Kalbi. Okay, hold on. How Jibreel look like Dahi al Kalbi? Hmm? And yet. Now we have two Dahya. Which one of them is Dahya? Hmm? Which one of them is Dahya? To make it simple for you, if now I am, uh, I'm a, let's say I am Muhammad, and then uh, an angel come to me, and he is he looked like Trump. He looked like Trump. Okay. How I will know that this is not Jibreel in the future? This is not a Trump, the real Trump. Yeah, I cannot know. Because now anyone see Dahya, he will think this is Jibreel. Because Muhammad, he confirmed that Jibreel and Yahya, they look the same. Okay. Right? So my friend, we prove to you that Jesus is a crucified and Muhammad lie. What else do you want me to prove to you? Anything else? Christianity, they said that our sin is why uh, is clear is uh, crucified by Jesus. So Jesus took all, 
all our sins. How can how that possible? So we we don't have to make a good deeds then. No, my friend, this we, is not. We this, can go back. No, you see, we can go back and Jesus can erase our sin. No, this is not what Christianity means. You see, never never let Muslims explain to you uh, 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 what 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 Christianity means. When we say that Jesus he took our sin, which means we are guilty with our sin. But if we accept him, we get a chance to be forgiven. However, the Messiah, he said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you repent, you will be forgiven, you go to heaven. Repent mean you don't do what you used to do. And then if you do the will of my father, you go to heaven. So in Christianity, there's no free pass to heaven. Because, okay, you just accepted Jesus. No, because we don't believe in hypocrisy. In Islam, it is the opposite. Muhammad, he said, even if you say the name of Allah 100 times, all your sin is forgiven. <laughs> if you say the name of Allah 99 times, all your, if you kiss the black stone, Allah for, erase your sin. We don't have this garbage yes, in Christianity. That's, that's why we go to Hajj. Exactly. So, uh, uh, if you if you if you hug the black stone uh, or the Yemeni corner together, Allah will erase your sin for the previous year. That is in Islam. And actually, the one who promised people to go to heaven is Muhammad. He gave them. You know, they say that the Pope he gave the Christian letters to go to heaven. That's a big fat lie. The one who did that, he promised ten people to go to heaven. Who is Muhammad to promise people to go to heaven? Who is he to promise them? Is he God? When the Quran says that may Allah forgive the sin of Muhammad. So how Muhammad can forgive the sin of others if he is just a prophet? How he can guarantee them heaven? In the same time, Muhammad, he got himself busted. He says that he is not sure if Allah will forgive his sin. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let us see here. Yes, yeah, yes uh, I'm already out of Islam, so you don't have to prove me that Muhammad is wrong already. But but I I'm curious about Christianity. How 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 on earth you say that uh, God come become a man and that man crucify and it erase our sins? It it doesn't make sense. No no it, you know when we say erase our sin, I just explained to you that that's mean if you okay when you when you believe in any religion. Let us say you used to be a Muslim, right? Okay. You believe in Allah and Muhammad, you go to heaven. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So how come there it makes sense? In Christianity, it does not make sense. In Christianity, you believe in Jesus as your Lord, as Savior. And then you do as he told you to do. And then if you are truthful, you will go to heaven. Jesus said from their fruit, you shall know them. What does that mean? Which means if you are a Christian, it's, uh, if you are if, your good deeds, not only good deeds, you have to be the same as a Christ. So good deed can be false, can be very false because appearance from their fruit, the fruit have to be the fruit of Jesus. So somebody he made a donation does not make him good because he might make a donation just to show off in the front of people that I am making a donation. You know, I am a good guy. Yes. But there is someone he make a donation from his heart. He don't care what people say. That is a that is the fruit of Jesus. Somebody he helps, somebody he don't want a return. That is the fruit of Jesus. So you have uh, to do the fruit of Jesus to be a follower of Jesus, not by name. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, so, also about Jesus. Uh, but let well, me let me finish first. Jesus let, me came finish. From, let me finish from first. Israel, right? Yeah. Hold on. Let me finish first. Here, here, the, the verses about Jesus saying, from their fruits you shall know them, destroy all the claims, Muslim falsely they say, that we are Christians, we claim, that just because we believe in Jesus, we'll go to heaven. That's absolutely false. There's tons of verses in the Bible. Je Jesus is clear, says it clearly. Not only that, there's a group of people, they will say, we made miracles in your name. He will say to them, depart of me, I do not know you. Why? Because they were doing those miracles in his name, using his power for the sake of their glory. So it's a big fat lie the Muslim they spread about Christianity that we Christian we believe just when you believe in Jesus you go to heaven you can go to the bar you can uh, sleep around you can be a thief you can be a drug dealer that is a you big can drink. you that, can eat Bobby too that is Bobby a Bobby is a pig eat what eat pig pig well my friend 
uh, eating pig does not make you a bad person because the pig can be better than a human being. I mean, look look what Jesus said. Jesus said, it's not what go inside your mouth make you dirty, but it what come out of your mouth. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Makes sense, right? Oh, so no. so eating pigs. In, in, in Bible say that we cannot eat. Yeah, but, there, but, but, but yeah, but pig. no, you see, there, there is a reason because at that time, people they used to, you know, the, the pigs they eat anything in the street. Right now, you have pigs in the farm, you control what they eat, and you, uh, the, uh, the pigs they eat anything, they eat dead, uh, even dead animals. So they can bring a, a big problem diseases like now, coronavirus is spread because of what? Because the Chinese are eating animals, they should not really use them for food, right? Why? Because those animals they are not really made for food. So when you when you change your diet and you make it a, 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 a wrong diet, it can destroy your life. So forbidding the pigs was for the benefit of uh, the, uh, the human being. As an example, the camel, the camel don't you know? Uh, uh, there's many animals they don't sweat. The poison stay inside their skin. So there is there is animals like uh, 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 the Muslim. They say to you. Uh, the rabbit in the Bible is forbidden. Why? Because the rabbit, he is like a cow. He he re eat his food because they are ignorant, stupid. The rabbit, when he eat, there's two kind of food he make. Actually, two kind of uh, let us say feces he make. Feces which come out to eat it later, and feces which is feces. So there's food which he digest immediately, and there's another stomach which prepare that food for later. Let's say he have a kitchen inside his 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 uh, his, uh, his stomach. So the Bible forbid them from eating that animal for a reason. So the Muslim, they always are ignorant and they take things out of contact and they try to make fun of it. But we get them busted as usual. So it is not food, my friend, will make you dirty. It's what you do. Imagine you are a person who eat a pig every day. You eat a donkey every day. But you are a person who never harm anyone. You never rape a child. You never stole. And there is a person who pray every day. He never eat a pig. He never blah, 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 blah. But he is a child molester like Muhammad. He is a criminal. He is a thief. Which one of them is better? Eating pig. Okay. So that makes sense what Jesus said. It's not what goes in your mouth make you dirty. It is what come from your mouth. Do you agree? So you're not saying, so you're not saying that uh, Bible is uh, all or New Testament is contradict the Old Testament. No, no, the New Testament. Jesus explaining to them that yes, I gave you this command, but this is not because that will make you dirty and that will make you bad or bad. You know, this is for your benefit. This is why he said to them, God He made Sabbath for the man, not the, not the man for Sabbath. The Jews they became the same as the Muslims. They are very strict. If you break the Sabbath, you know, that's it. There's no mercy. So J Jesus, he said to them, clearly, you have a wrong understanding that I am the one who gave you the command. And I gave you the command for a reason. So when I gave you the command for not eating pigs was for a reason, not because the pigs will make you a bad person. What make you a bad person is not the pig. It's you. It's, what, it's not what go inside your mouth. It's what come out of your mouth. And I told you the Old Testament gave it for a reason. Everything in the Old Testament is for the benefit of the man. God, if you if you eat pig or not, he, he don't really care. I mean, what a big deal. He created the pig. But because the pig is an animal who eat anything in, 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 the, in the field, including a human being. But today we don't see a human being in the street and the pig will eat them. And then late, later we eat the pig, right? Today... Pigs are different animals, and they are growing, and there's doctors, they check them out. And, you know, as you see, uh, uh, all animals have disease. Like now, corona, the first corona was discovered was in Saudi Arabia, coming from the camel. United Nations issued a big warning for drinking camel milk, too, not only camel meat. So there's, there's a virus can come from the, uh, from, from the chicken. From the bird, from the birds, from the from the from the fish. Yeah, it can come from the pig. Can come from uh, 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 all kind of animals, and a virus can come from a human being. You know, we are, you know, we are, <laughs> we are not better. So, all of those things they misunderstood by the Muhammadan, 
and Jesus, he brought a very great logic. It's not what go inside the mouth of the man, make him bad or dirty. It is what come from the mouth. That's a great wisdom. Overcome the foolishness of some people who try to understand wrongly what God he want from them. right okay and do you do you find any wisdom better than the wisdom of Jesus be honest you can go and read the Bible right now and you will find any wise any and nowhere in the world anyone can say anything like the Messiah uh, in New Testament mm -hmm. uh, they say that uh, it's 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 almost uh, half half of the New Testament is written by it's written by you know uh, it's written by Paul and Paul never met Jesus, right? My friend, no, Paul he met Jesus when he's way in his way to Damascus. The Lord he appeared to him, and he made him blind. And even this story is mentioned in many interpretation book. So yes, he met him. The same like. It's the same like Muhammad when he, no, he saw Jesus. No, 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 my friend, because Paul is not a person who came 600 years after. Paul, right away, he was going after the disciple of Jesus who was existing in the time of Jesus, not someone he came 200 years after. And he met with them, and he discussed with them, and they accepted him, and he became a great teacher for Christians. So, and God, he made a miracle as a proof that he is sent by him. He made him blind, and then he gave him his, his, his eyes again. So, uh, uh, Paul, he met the, the, the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him. And in the same time, uh, let us say that Paul was not exist. That will not change anything. Because all the writing of Paul is totally in total agreement with other Bibles. There's four witnesses of the Bible. Four writers. And those four writers are inspired by God. Each one of them, he told the story as the Lord, he inspired him to tell it. Uh, and the reason for that... You know, like if you are a person who, uh, uh, if you, if you like now, you are talking to me. Tomorrow you are going to tell the people what happened in the conversation with me. And then there is somebody who was listening to us. He might report the story differently, even though he's not lying. Why? Because each one of us, he have a gift from God to give details more than the others. So you give details for things you find it interesting for you more than the other. Four witnesses will give a perfect story for People, one story with more details and more important stuff. So Paul, his existence will not change anything. Okay, let us say there's no Paul. The Muslims, they hate Paul, right? Okay, but the Quran, we showed you from the interpretation. If you watch my videos, the Quran admit and clearly and in the interpretation that Paul was one of the messenger of God. But who cared about the Quran, a stupid book? We don't, we, we don't prove anything from, the, we use the Quran just to prove to Muslims. But Paul, his existence, did he teach something against Christ's teaching? No. Did he believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but the rest did he believe in something different? No. Not a single word Paul he spoke of is against the teaching of the four gospel in Christianity. So when they speak too much against Paul because they are stupid, they have to find somebody to attack him. But if there is Paul or there is no Paul, nothing will change. Okay, let us say there is only one book. It's called the book of Matthew. Nothing will change. Jesus is God in the book of Matthew. Let us say there's only one book, the book of John. Still nothing changed. The book of John says clearly that Jesus is God. He did all the miracles. Let us say there's a book, only the book of Luke or Mark. So this is only an excuse for from ignorant who do not know what they are talking about. Okay, one, one last time. All right. I will ask you about uh, Trinity. Okay. Trinity. What about the Trinity? Tell me, what do you like to know? It's very confusing that the, uh, Christianity have three gods. No, we don't have three gods. We have one God. The Bible, all of it, it says one God. If you go on right now, search, you can go to any Bible search engine, type the word one God. You will find from the first in the in, in, in the, the beginning that your your God is one, one God. You know? So there's no single Christian. Christianity say we believe in Father the Son and the Holy Ghost. One God, my friend. And then we say one God. I mean to that. So we say the Father, the, the, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. One God. We don't say three gods. So God, God, he, 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 he told us about himself. 
that I am God in heaven. I sent to you my son in the flesh of a human being on earth. And when I am not there with you in physically as Jesus, as the Christ, my spirit will be with you. So God is a spirit because the Messiah, he said clearly, you know, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. How you can be between them? Because the spirit is always between us. Spirit is everywhere. And God is powerful. So if God, he cannot be three and one in the same time, well, God cannot be even one because this is, when we call him, we call him what? We call him almighty, correct? What Almighty mean? Explain to me. Almighty is, uh, I'll just say it. It's Almighty. I mean, almighty mean he can. He is. He is a person. Capable. He is a person of might. He can do anything, right? Yes. Okay. The God of Islam, he can't be a man. My God, he can be a man. What is the what is the difficulty? Imagine that Jibreel, who is just an angel, he came to Muhammad as a man. So Jibreel, he can transform and became a man, but Allah, he cannot be a man. So in a Christianity, God is capable, the same as he was able to make Mary have a son, yet she don't have a husband. Well, God, he told us that I am one, but in the same time, three person. Is that possible? Everything is possible with God. Otherwise, you should not believe in any miracle. Because miracle is about impossible, not possible. Right? Okay, so you are saying that uh, the, they say that Holy Ghost is everywhere. It's uh, omnipresence. They say that. How, how, how to say that? Uh, they everywhere. Is it really a Holy Ghost here in we are talking right now? The, the Messiah, he said, every two mention my name, I will be between them, which means I will be the third. So right now as we speak, the Messiah is witnessing, the Holy Spirit is witnessing, and our God, the Father, is witnessing. Because God is exists everywhere by His knowledge, by His ability. He's not limited. And how do I know that uh, if He is here or He is now with us, how do you prove it? How, how, how Christianity prove it? Well, you know, if you read the Bible, you will see that the Jews, when they were speaking about the Messiah, the Messiah, he knew what they were thinking about in their head, in their brain. Even the Quran says that the Messiah can tell you what you hide in your houses. How he knew people, they were in their houses doing stuff, yet Jesus, he knew what they were doing in their houses. You know what I mean? So how Jesus... Me, huh? The first, the first. Can you show me the first bit? Okay, okay. Let me show you the verse. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right. This is chapter 3, verse number 49. I will put it for you in the screen in your language so you can see it. Jesus, he tell you what you hide in your houses. Okay, people, they are in their house now. And Jesus, he is in different place. How he knew what people have in their houses. It's impossible unless he is God. How he knew. How, how, how he knew uh, what I am saying to you, what you are saying to me. That, but because that's mean he have a, a infinite uh, knowledge. And that's mean he can know anything, not only those people only. Because how he knew that even those, anyone, any one of you, all of you, anyone of you, I can tell you what you did in your house, what you save in your house, what you had in your house, what you do in your house. And the verse in front of you, let me make it for you in your language. This is in English. I will make it in Basha. Where is the Basha language? We miss it. We jump it, maybe. Okay, here we go. It's coming long here, but you see, it should be at the end. It says that Jesus, he tell you what you hide in your houses, what you do in your houses, correct? Yes. Okay, how he knew that? If he is not with us. I am in my house between... Mm -hmm. I am in my house between four walls, and now I have $10. I want to save them under the pillow. 
How Jesus will knew that? I don't hear you. Sesungguhnya pada yang demikian adalah suatu tanda kebenaran kerasulanmu bagimu jika kamu sungguh-sungguh beriman. So how in the language of the Bahasa, as they are correcting me, sorry, I was saying Basha, Bahasa, how he knew what you had in your houses? Unless he is God everywhere, his knowledge is everywhere, his ability is not limited behind walls. No walls can hide anything from him. So if I commit sin right now between, be, behind the walls, Jesus, he knew, he see me. He did not need a black stone to witness for him about what I did as Muhammad did and said. So Jesus is all knowledgeable. How he knew that? Okay, I, I have a Christian friend, uh, Christian, Christian pre, uh, friend too. They say uh, they or they they always tell me that they can feel God inside their heart. They can when they pray, they pray. They can uh, feel their the the God in, inside their heart. They they know that they pray is uh, they God here. They pray. How 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 do they know? How 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 your Christian know that? Okay, well, is that, this, uh, this is this uh, is a this the spirit is, tell you something or yeah. oh, audibly right. tell right. you something when you first, pray. First of all, this is depend on who you are. If you are a true believer or just you are a person who is born as a Christian, you don't really care. So a true believer, yes, he feel God within him. He give you passionate. He give you strength. He give you all the power you need. Uh, you know, for me as an example, I am a weak person. Who I am? I am nobody. If I, I if I depend on myself, I cannot I cannot help you right now. Who I am? I, I'm no one. But I believe strongly that the Lord He used me, and He speak, He tell me, He He give me wisdom. Otherwise, the, the, the wisdom of a man is a wisdom wisdom of a foolish. No one no man is wise. So the Lord Himself He prove Himself to us, and He is exist with us. He, the Lord the Messiah said, "Knock at my door, and I will open for you." That's it. You do not need to kiss stones. Knock at my door. Ask him, hey, Lord, I want to I I believe in you. Help me, please. Just to speak from your heart. And then you will see, you will hear the answer. So the Lord is there. He do not need any middle person between you and him. He do not need you. Jesus, he said, when you pray, go to your closet. You do not need to go stand in front of people, be hypocrite, show that you are a good person praying and say, I am fasting Ramadan, etc. He don't want that. Actually, he forbid you from doing that. He said, when you fast, you don't tell anyone. You, even you wash your face with water so nobody will know that you are fasting. Because you fast, this is something for you, between you and me. It's not something you do as a duty. We don't believe in a duty in order to be a Christian. We believe that a Christian have to do things if he believe in it. Which means, if I am a true Christian, I do what true Christian do. So, Praying here, praying there, even the Messiah, he said, don't be the same as the hypocrite who pray in the corners. Who is talking? Who is talking about who? He's talking about the Jews and the Muslims today who pray in the corner. Why you should not pray in the corner? Because when you pray, you pray to who? You pray to me. Why you want to pray in the corner to show everybody that you are praying? It's, it's called asan. We call anyone to call, uh, to pray uh, together. It remind us to do a five prayer. No, in Christianity, my friend, you pray anytime you will, you want because this is personal relationship with God. Pray as you wish. You pray when you are standing. You pray when you are working. You pray when you are driving. And if you want to have like a special spiritual prayer. For sure, it's going to be better if you have like in a private place. However, you can go to the church. The church prayer is to share with the community. But you praying to the Lord, speaking to Him, this is something very personal. Anytime you want, you can pray to Him. In Matthew, in Matthew chapter 6, the Messiah, He said, Don't be the same, don't pray, like, don't be like the hypocrite. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the street corners to be seen by man. 
So this is their purpose. This is why I say to you, it's not enough to believe in Jesus to go to heaven, but you have to be a true believer. Not by saying what I believe, but by being a true believer. How a true believer is? A true believer, he will not go in the corner to show off because this is his belief. His belief is something private between him and his Lord. You don't go, hey, I'm fasting, guys. I'm a good guy. I grow my beard. I'm fasting, you know. I'm tired from fasting. He won't tell everybody because he's a hypocrite. He's a fraud. This is this is the sign of a fraud. He won't tell everybody. The Messiah, he said, the opposite you do because he don't want to fraud yeah. around him. So my friend, Faisal, I don't want you to believe that Christianity is the same as Islam. There's one, two, three, four, you pray five times, etc., and then you go to heaven. No, this is stupid. In Christianity, it's a life you live, truthful life. You believe in the Messiah. You obey his command. And no one can say you are going to be a holy man who never commits sin. All of us, we are sinners. And God, he knew that. He accept us as we are. However, he understand at the same time, if you are hypocrite or you are given the effort to fight your sin. You know what I mean? Yes. Like I am, let us say, I am dirty right now. And either I take a shower to fight my dirt and I get dirty again. I take a shower again and, you know, and I use whatever I can to clean my dirt or I stay with my dirt forever because I don't care. So the Lord, you cannot fool the Lord. You cannot lie to him. You cannot be hypocrite with him. There's no hypocrisy in Christianity. Hypocrisy only exists in Islam. This is why when Muhammad says, if you say the name of Ar-Rahman 30 times, your sin is forgiven. What is that? I mean, this is stupid. If you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. I mean, what is that? So just say those words and your sin is forgiven. That is the most stupid argument ever. That's mean a, 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 we can do and all kind of sin and just we say those words and that's it. In Christianity, you cannot do that. Even if you say the name of Jesus one billion times, your sin is not forgiven unless you mean it, unless you repent, unless you accept that you are going to fight sin and you are not hypocrite. So what do you what do you think? You would accept the Messiah as your savior? Uh, if I accept that, uh, what which church I have to go? There's a lot of church in Indonesia. Well, tell me, there's a lot of religion. It's a Catholic. No uh, problem. Protestant. Tell me, tell me that you accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your savior, and I will be do my best to tell you where to go. Do you accept the Messiah as your savior? Uh, let me ask you one last time. Okay. No problem. Go ahead. I want to ask you uh, heart by heart, honestly. So you have to answer me uh, with your heart. I am answering you with my heart, if, my friend, from the first second you call me. Trust me. If you find, if any, if any point of your life, you find that uh, Christianity is a false, is a it's a false religion also like I found it in Islam today. Would you like to be a man and committed and say that you will leave Christianity? My friend, a person who fight a fight like mine, ris risking my life. Do you think I'm risking my life because I don't believe in Jesus? I'm risking my life speaking yes. to you right now. I'm risking my Do you know how many people want to kill me? So my friend, a person who is willing to risk his life, the same as Paul, the same as Mark, the same as Luke, they get the, the disciple of Jesus. They're being killed, they crucified. Do you think those people, they, they're being given as food to the animals. Do you think really those people, they are willing to do that and they don't believe? So there is no reason for me to say to you, to talk to you, to spend my time right now. Right now for me, it's almost middle of the night. Why in the world? I want to leave everywhere. And I am a single guy. I can go have party. I can have fun. I can go in the, to a restaurant. Why in the world I sit with a guy from the middle of nowhere in, 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 in Indonesia? He, he's not from my culture. He's not from my uh, religion, my belief. He shared nothing with me. And I spent all this time just to help him to accept the Messiah. There's one reason, my friend. The Spirit of the Lord is helping me to be a servant. Otherwise, nobody can make me a servant. Nobody can force me to be a servant. You see, our Lord is a Lord of a freedom. He said, be holy like your father. But it's a choice. It's a choice to be holy. It's up to you. So be holy is a choice. Not to be holy is a choice too. So why I am talking to you, 
because I am honest, because I believe, because I have passionate, because I believe the Lord, the Messiah is the true Lord. Otherwise, I'm not going to waste my a second with you because the second is gone from my life. Now you cannot bring it to me with all the money in the world. Nobody can bring me all the years I spent here talking, speaking to Muslim, trying to help them. Who can give me those years? More than 20 years of my life. Who is going to bring me those years? Nobody. Nobody. I spend my night when people go outside to party, to, to dinner, they have wedding, they have etc. I stay here. Christmas, I stay here. New Year, I stay here. I am here, my friend, for you. Why? Because of Jesus. Because I want you to be saved. And because I believe that there's no better job for me to do in the world better than saving a human being. The Lord, he said, a happiness will be in the kingdom of the Lord for one soul is saved. And your soul today, my friend, I believe is going to be saved. And a happiness in the kingdom of the Lord will be there for you. Okay. Do you accept the Messiah? Okay. Yes. I mean to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our brother. Pray for him. Pray for our brother who called me from Indonesia. That the Lord blessed us today. All of us we are blessed. He's blessed and I'm blessed and all of you are blessed. He called me and the Lord, he made him. He guided him. He opened his heart. It's not me, my friend, who brought you to Christ. It's your heart. And the Lord today is giving you a big hug. The Lord, you see, we as a Christian, we don't believe in slavery. You are free today. You are a child of God. You are not a slave of anyone. God, he freed you. Uh, I, I don't know, but why I'm crying right now? You are crying because you believe it, because you felt it. A second ago, you told me, how I know? How I know that Jesus is going to be real? How I know that the Christian, they say to me, if you believe, you feel it. And you here we go. You are crying because you feel it, my friend. What kind of feeling is it? Why I am crying? Because this is a, the wonderful feeling. God, He touched your heart. You do not know why you are crying because you are happy. Because you, because your tears will wash your sin. Your tears will wash the pagan religion of Islam from your from from your body, from your skin, from your eyes. You have a new life. You are now a reborn again Christian. This is the best gift being given to you in your lifetime. There is nothing better, my friend. And about about the question I am asked about you, uh, the church, about the church. The church, my friend, it's a personal choice. Anyone who teach according to the Bible is a good church, which means you go to a priest, you ask him specific questions. If he say to you, if you ask him about Islam, if he say Islam, they believe in the same God, this is a garbage church, doesn't matter what the name. If they are, they claim to be Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. Anyone who defend the devil is not a Christian. Anyone who is a hypocrite is not a Christian. So the one, the Bible says, who is the Antichrist is the one who deny the Father and the Son. So anyone who accept that Muslims believe in the same God, obviously he is not following the Messiah. Stay away from that church. So there's a specific questions you ask them. If they have no problem with those religions, then they are not a Christian. Stay away from them. So there is no need for a name to give you. As I saw, said to you, remember the sentence that Jesus he said, from their fruits you shall know them. So wherever you go, examine the fruit of the priest. If he says to you, yes, we believe Christians and Muslims have the same God, and etc., and it's okay to be uh, doing, uh, you know, sleeping around, and uh, God is all merciful, forgive you, it's okay. It's okay to be a prostitute, it's okay to be a drug dealer. This guy is a fraud, he is working for the devil, for he is not telling the truth. So, the only way to know is to examine them yourself, ask serious questions. And then either you are going to be part of this family, which is going to be a holy family, or you will reject them and stay away from them. So what I will do to my Quran, holy Quran then? Well, the Quran, don't burn it, don't throw it away. Use it to bring Christians, bring people to Christ. Show them how crazy it is. As you see, I don't burn my Quran. <laughs> I use it. <laughs> The Quran is helping me to make Muslims leave Islam. If I don't use the Quran, I will be without tools. Quran is my tools 
as a maintenance person. It's my screwdriver, it's my player, it's my uh, uh, a wrench, it's my hammer. It's This is the Quran, I use it. I destroy the Quran by Quran. I destroy Islam by Islam. And the rest is in the hand of my Lord. Well, I do not know really what is the best translation in Indonesian. Maybe you can ask uh, someone who is a Christian from Indonesia. He can help you in that. But uh, uh, there is many Bible in English. Uh, you know, uh, you can translate. Translation is a translation at the end of the day. There is, uh, there is translation better than other translation. Uh, however, uh, you know, for us, we have to find the, 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 uh, the good balance. Like uh, for me, uh, in English, I believe that uh, King James is very uh, balanced translation, even though at the end of the day, translation is not perfect. You know, like the best way to really to enjoy the teaching of Christ is to learn the language. But that is not is possible easy for everybody. However, this is why in Christianity, translation is fine. But there is many good translation. As, as an example, the Bible in Aramaic in plain English. That is a great translation to read and to understand the Bible because it's keeping the original Aramaic and translating that directly, not a translation because many translations are translation of a translation. Okay. Okay then. I will I will try to search it, uh, search for church first and I will try to contact my Christian friends first let them know that uh, I'm living the Islam so they can maybe guide me and company to the church happy for you, you my friend happy for I wish I live in Indonesia to take you with me you know and have a, a, a coffee in the morning before we go and uh, give you a big hug as a brother I'm older brother than you for sure and uh, you know I will be honored to know you and to know your family and I welcome you right now in front of all the Christians look how many Christians are happy for you I mean, it's amazing. You made a lot of people happy today, my friend, my brother in Christ. You made a lot of people happy. Not only you, not only you did the cry. Many of people there because they love you, because they are true Christian. They love you, but we love the Muslims. We will never hate the Muslims. And from now on, you should you should understand that you, as a Christian, you should have a good heart. You love everybody. You don't hate the Muslims. You don't hate the Hindus. You don't hate the Buddhas. You love everybody. But love does not mean giving hugs. Love means sharing the truth. And the truth will set you free love is the way my friend and love always walks side by side with the truth you love people you tell them the truth you don't lie to them if you love your son you tell him the truth so he will not be doing something wrong will end somewhere bad this is what love means yes, yes, correct. yeah so remember that always and i pray uh, uh, i pray to the lord uh, that he will he will help you he will take you from your hand and he will open the heart of your family so they will accept you and if you are married i hope that your wife she will accept you and she will she will convert to christianity too in case she, you, you are married you have kids and i pray that you will have a wonderful family wonderful future and uh if you don't know i have my book in in uh, translated into indonesian language i'm not sure if you have it you can download it from online uh maybe the admin can post the link for it uh, in indonesian can, language can you send me the link okay thank you yeah, and, and they will post it for you in the chat. You can click on it and download it. It's for free. It's an Indonesian language about Quran and science that will help you too to bring more people to the truth and the truth will set you free. Happy for you, my friend. God bless you. Okay. God bless you too. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Well, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to take calls from, from anyone now. Because it's not easy to speak all this time on a stop. I'm so happy for our, our brothers and sisters in Indonesia. We love them. We care for them. And the Lord is using us. Is using us in a good way. To bring him more more good people fishermen good fishermen and this person god knows how many people he will bring to christ
they might do way better job than me. God is good, my friend. Never, never say, you know what, I'm wasting my time. Never say that. The second you say that, it's, it's Satan is waiting for you. He's like, he wants you to give up. Like the world is ugly. People are crazy. Sin everywhere. Madness. Never give up. When you look at the ocean, you see the waves are coming one after one. And you ask yourself, when the waves will stop coming? When they will give up? But in case you do not know, those waves, they are extremely powerful. They have a lot of energy. And what makes them powerful is that they don't give up. They keep coming. This is how we as a Christians, we should be. Strong like ocean, consistent, never give up. A believer, full of energy, who nothing can stop him. The Bible says that they can kill, they can destroy the body. But they cannot destroy, as long as they can destroy your soul, you are saved. This is where our strength. When the Roman they were feeding the Christians to the animals. Why the Christian at that time did not say, okay, we will forget about Jesus. I mean, why in the world anyone? When I let somebody feed him to the cats, tigers, lions, what is the purpose of this? Just to accept someone whose name is Jesus? My friend, for them their life were worth nothing without Jesus. And this is additional proof when they say that Christianity is a lie. It's a big fat lie. Because why those people will sacrifice their life? For what? Why somebody believe in a lie at that time? And remember, he isn't the promised ver you know, versions and boys where they are naked. No. There is no such a promise. And those are people who witness Jesus. So why the disciple who witness Jesus accept such a horrible death? What the benefit they are getting from that? Nothing. Except that they are true believers. True believer who did give a true sacrifice. The Lord is good. His fruit is amazing. And His fruit will show through you. And this is why He said that from their fruits you shall know them. And this is how we judge Muhammad. If Muhammad is a good guy, show me his fruits. Criminal, thief, liar, rapist. You want to know who Jesus? Go and see his fruits. Holy, truthful, sincere, loving, giving, sacrificing. To the point, even when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. Imagine, the Messiah, he is not the kind of hypocrite who say, forgive sin to others. But he himself don't forgive for those who they are doing wrong to him. He proved it. Even in the cross, they are putting nails in his hands, in his feet, crucifying him, torturing him. Yet he is worried about them and he said, forgive them, Father. This is how the Messiah, my friend, is worried about you. You crucify him every day. You put nails in his hands, in his feet every day by your sin. And then he say, forgive them, Father. And this is what the Muslim don't want to understand. That when we say that our sin is forgiven by, by Jesus, not because Jesus, he gave us a ticket of forgiveness. Do whatever you want. This is not true. This is in Islam, actually. In Islam, you do all kind of sin. You say Shahada, you are saved. In his Christianity, there is no such a thing. Every day, the Messiah is hoping good for us. 
And if you want to be known by the Messiah, you better be known by your fruits, not by your color, not by your ethnic, not by your language. This is the last thing the Messiah he care for. For all of us, we are children of God. No one is better than anyone. No black, no white, no Asian, no Greek, no Hebrew, no free, no slave, no male, no female. For by him we are united. The same as today we were united with our brother from Indonesia. Different language, different culture. At the end of the world. But yet Christ, he can make him cry and he can make me cry. For we are both made by him and he loves us. Is it important to be Baptist? Absolutely. However, if you could not, still you are saved by the Messiah. As an example, when the Messiah was on the cross, there was a person next to him on the cross. He accepted the Messiah. The Messiah he promised him to be saved, for he believed from his heart. So, baptism is, um, is you should do as soon as you can do it. But this is not the only thing. Make you Christian, as we learn it is losing connection. All right, guys, I think my internet is going, is suffering from some problems. For a second, I lost connection. I hope I will not lose it again. So I'm not going to stay. Uh, I'm not going to stay longer. As long as the internet is going bad. Am I heard now? Am I heard? Do you hear me? Let me text. I think the text come faster. All right. All right. Well, I'm not going to stay longer because I see my internet is getting getting disconnected. That's mean there is something wrong. Uh, but I'm happy for our brother here today, and I hope that this message is delivered to as many as we can from Indonesia. And remember uh, that. Most of those Muslims in Indonesia, Philippines, all those countries, they are very good people. They have no idea. They have no idea. They are just born there. You know, if you are born there, you will be like them. So we need to love them. We need to share the truth with them. And the Lord, he will open doors and he will bring many and many people to him. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Well, it's not only my job, it's your job to help me too. Download the video, add title, add subtitle to your language. Let people hear, let people learn. The truth, my friend, the truth will set you free. And the truth is Jesus. Uh, we are just people who share a little bit of knowledge. But the truth is there with the Lord. We pray that the Lord will open more doors for us so we can share the truth with everybody in many languages. Uh, actually, I don't even remember why and how people from Indonesia, they were start listening to my videos. I'm, I'm not sure why, but I believe it was a gift to me from the Lord. I love those people, really. They made me more happy and more uh, uh, excited in what I do. I'm doing this for many, many years. But having those Indonesian people who they are really wonderful people, is giving me special pleasure because this is the biggest Islamic country ever. And if we can reach to them, we will save hundreds of millions out of Islam and we will bring them to Christ. That will be an amazing uh, mission. So we pray for them. We pray for their family. We pray for our brother here who accepted Christ today and he was a crying. And we pray more people will come to Christ as soon as possible. I'm not going to stay longer. Uh, I, I want to say thanks for all of you. And please don't forget to download the video. Share it with your friends. My videos are for free. It's not made for me. I don't care if you have a million subscribers because of my videos. Good for you. What is important for me is to share the message. 
And when you download the video, share it in your channel. Uh, if somebody accepted Christ, you receive the blessing because because of your posting the video, that person he learned about the Messiah and he learned the truth. And the Lord will reward you. Thank you, Lord, for having those great people here. My family, who I never met. And I'm really blessed to have a huge family who care for me. I wish I can know them all. I wish I can meet them. But for sure, we will meet one day in his kingdom. All of us. Thank you, all of you. I really appreciate you. And I appreciate my Lord for sending such a good people to be part of my mission. Thank you, Lord, for sending this brother to call me today. It was a gift I don't deserve. For he gave me a blessing. Thank you all. Take care.